Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at Intel's all-new Serpent Canyon NUC, otherwise known as the NUC 12 Enthusiast. And when it comes down to it, this is the most powerful Enthusiast NUC that they've created so far. Now, if you remember back to the NUC 11 Enthusiast, it was using a mobile variant of an RTX 2060, but with the new Serpent Canyon, they actually opted to use their brand new Intel Arc platform for the GPU. And of course, since it's a 12th gen NUC, we've got a 12th gen Intel CPU. So yeah, this is something I've definitely been looking forward to, and I've been really wanting to test out these new Intel Arc graphics. And even though we've got a mobile version here, it's the highest end mobile version as of making this video. It's the A770M, and we've got 16 gigabytes of dedicated GDDR6 VRAM with this GPU. And of course, it's paired up with a powerful Intel 12th Gen mobile CPU. It's the 12700H, so we've got 12 cores and 20 threads there, up to 4.7 gigahertz. So overall, really loving the new look. Obviously, it does come with a stand, so we can set it up vertically if you want to, but it'll also sit horizontally, so we can actually just remove this stand super easily. Just comes right off. It's actually secured in there with some rubber grommets, so it's not going to go anywhere once it's set up vertically, but you can always set it horizontally if you want to. Now, if you're familiar with these Enthusiast or the Extreme NUX, you know we've always kind of had that Intel skull logo somewhere on the unit. This is no different. It is a lit skull, but since this was codenamed Serpent Canyon, they also sent along kind of a Viper insert, so you can swap between the two. I just chose to use the Viper to get a little different look out of it. I think it looks pretty cool. But we've got full RGB control from the BIOS or software while we're in Windows. This also comes with a pretty beefy power supply when it comes to these mini PCs. It's actually a 330 watt, and with that 12th gen CPU and the dedicated GPU, we might get up there to the 240 or 250 watt range at full boat with this unit, and I'll definitely take a look at that by the end of the video. And with this, given the form factor, they've really added a lot of I.O. here. So up front, we've got two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. We've also got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, Thunderbolt 4 port, and a full-size SD card reader. Now, moving around back, you can see we've got much more back here. Four USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. We've got another Thunderbolt 4 port, optical audio, full-size HDMI, and this is 2.1. We've also got two full-size display ports and our power in. Before we jump into all of the testing, I wanted to give you a quick rundown here. For that CPU, we've got the Intel Core i7-12700H. I've actually tested this out in a few different laptops on the channel. It's really a great performer. 14 cores, 20 threads, and a max turbo on the performance cores up to 4.7 gigahertz. This NUC will support up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. Remember, it uses SODIMM RAM. And really, the main claim to fame with this enthusiast NUC is the Intel Arc GPU. It's using the A770M. We've got 16 gigabytes of dedicated GDDR6 VRAM, and I've seen this clock as high as 2000 megahertz. And obviously, these Intel Arc graphics are really new to the market. Now, they're offering desktop variants, so you can pick up GPUs powered by Arc, or we've got the mobile variants, and this is exactly what we have in this new NUC. We've got the highest end model here, the A770M. 32 ray tracing cores. We've got a graphics clock of 1650 megahertz, and I'm guessing this is the base clock because I've definitely seen this jump up to 2000 megahertz. 16 gigabytes of VRAM running at a 256 bit bus, and the A770M will run at 120 to 150 watts. Now, in performance mode here, I'm sure we're hitting that 150 watt range there, given that we have those boost clocks that are so high. But yeah, this is the first time I'm testing ARC, and I'm really excited to do some more videos on it. And since we're here, I figured I'd give you a quick look at the internals. Now, it's pretty easy to get in here. We can access that SODIMM RAM, so you can upgrade this at any time. And we've actually got three NVMe slots. Now, only two of these are Gen 4, and I've got them both populated with Fury drives here. But when it comes to NVMe storage, we can definitely load this thing down. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into Windows 11. Then we'll get right into some testing. All right, so I've got everything installed. I've got everything updated. I've been messing around with this for a little while and it's really snappy. I mean, we already know about this Intel i7-12700H. It's a great performer. We've tested it in a few laptops, but what we haven't seen yet is the performance of this new Arc A770M. And along with this new GPU, we get the new Intel Arc Control. So this is basically a new control panel for these Arc GPUs. 
We've got quite a few settings that we can change from here. And we also have the new game overlay from Intel. So you can set this up with whatever hotkey you want and have it overlay while you're playing a game or it comes up even on the desktop. And like I mentioned, with that new Intel Arc Control, there are some settings that we can change to gain a little better performance. But really, when it comes down to it, you can either do this from the BIOS or you can download the NUC Software Studio. And from here, we can actually set up different power profiles for the CPU and GPU. Right now, I'm at max performance, but you can go to low power mode if you want to. You can also set up a custom fan curve, and this can also be done from the BIOS, but this does make it really easy to do it from the operating system. And we've also got full light control. So we've got a bunch of LEDs, and we've also got that side panel LED on the NUC itself. We can control it from here, full RGB. So you can set this up and make it look exactly how you want. So far, I've been doing a lot of testing with this Serpent Canyon NUC, and uh, when it comes to fan noise, it's definitely not as loud as some of the older gaming-focused NUCs, but, you know, keep in mind, we've got a lot of power packed into a small space here, and those fans do need to ramp up a little bit. Now, it doesn't sound like a jet engine, like the older Cabby Lake G CPU that they had in the Hades Canyon. It's much quieter than that. They've done a really good job designing the cooling system in here, but it's not a totally silent experience. Okay, so I really wanted to jump into some gaming here just to show you how this thing performs. Forza Horizon 5, 1440p, Ultra Settings, and we get some really great performance. I can average around 79 FPS out of this, the way it's set up right now, and it will do 4K, but you need to turn on that resolution scale. So from within the game, if we go to Balance, Ultra, 4K, we can get an average of around 67 FPS. Turning V-Sync on and just locking it right at 60, you're going to have a great playthrough at 4K with this. But personally, I still think it looks absolutely amazing at 1440p Ultra, especially on a really nice panel. I wanted to show one more here, and then we'll move over to some benchmarks. But we've got Spider-Man Remastered at 1080p high settings. So I was actually expecting a little more out of this. But to tell you the truth, with these recent updates to the game, I've been having issues even with my higher end rig. So I'm not exactly sure if that's kind of affecting this performance, but we are over 60. I mean, I didn't see it dip under 60 at 1080p high settings. Still looks great and perfectly playable on this new NUC. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, here's 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with a total score of 55,250. Next up, we've got Fire Strike coming in with a 23,462. And finally here, we've got Time Spy with a score of 10,995. Now, we did take a look at last year's Nook 11 Enthusiast, which actually had that RTX 2060 in a very small form factor. And with that, we scored a 6,264. So with the new Nook 12 Enthusiast and those ARC graphics, we've definitely got a nice bump in performance when it comes to the GPU, and especially on the CPU, given that we have new 12th gen in this one. But now it's time to take a look at some more gaming performance. And first up, we've got The Witcher 3. I figured going into this, we'd get really great performance out of this game. It's definitely been on the market for a while. 4K Ultra, hair works off. We can average around 67 FPS. At 1440p, we're getting an average of around 81. So it's really up to you. Slow now. Next up, we've got Overwatch 2, 4K, maximum, no resolution scale, and I figured we'd get great performance out of this. If you want to run this at 120, you can take this down to 1080p or even 1440p medium settings, but at 4K, maxed out, no resolution scale, we can get an average of 88 FPS. Here's World of Warcraft. Personally, haven't played this in a while, but I've kind of put it back in the testing rotation because I've had a lot of people asking about it. 4K maxed out, and we can get over 100 FPS. So you can go ahead and just lock this down if you want to, but yeah, it's definitely going to run this game really, really well at 4K. When it comes to the rest of the games I tested for this video, we're at 1440p. So here's God of War. We're at high settings, 1440p. And yeah, we can definitely run this over 60. Unfortunately, at 4K, it's just not going to handle it. Elden Ring did really well. Now, this is one of those games that loves a good CPU. And we definitely have that with the 12700H. High settings, 1440p, we're locked at 60. Unfortunately, at maximum settings, I was right there in the mid-50s, so if you did want to run at max, you'd have to drop it down to 1080.
<laughs> Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p, medium settings, we can get an average of around 64 FPS. So this is one of those games that's just really hard to run, but I was kind of surprised at how well this ARC GPU handled it. And of course, you know, with my screen capture, we do have some screen tearing going on here. Turning VSync on is going to eliminate all of that. For some reason, my variable refresh rate on the recorder wasn't on at the time I was recording this one. And finally, we have Dirt 5. This is one I always like to test. 1440p, high medium mix with dynamic resolution scale turned on. And that's going to scale it down for us. But yeah, I mean, it still performs really well. Looks amazing. And we can get over 60 FPS with Dirt 5. I always like to take a look at total system power consumption, and this is going to be much more than some of the little APU-powered mini PCs we take a look at. This does come with a 330 watt power supply, and at idle, we're around 39 watts, which is much more than I thought it would be, but remember, I'm in performance mode. Average gaming, 218 watts, and the max that I could get this to pull from the wall while pegging out the CPU and GPU at the same time was 256 watts. So yeah, I mean, it can definitely pull some power, but it's not as bad as, you know, a higher-end desktop gaming rig. When it comes to CPU temps, one thing you got to keep in mind is the cooler in here is actually cooling the GPU and the CPU at the same time. They're not separate coolers. We do have dual fans, but it's all using that same thin array. At idle, 39 degrees Celsius. Average gaming, 84, and I did get some spikes up to around 95 in a few of those games. One thing to note here is, you know, if you don't mind a louder PC, you can always adjust this fan curve manually. I'm just using their performance profile which does try to limit the noise, but also give us some pretty good cooling. But we could get much better out of this if we did a manual fan curve. It's going to be a bit louder, but we could keep those temps way down. So yeah, overall, really impressed with Serpent Canyon. Uh, this is definitely putting out some really great performance. CPU performance is awesome with that 12700H, and the ARC A77M is definitely trading blows with the RTX 3060 laptop variant. In some games and benchmarks, you'll see the 3060 outperform the A770M and vice versa. I mean, and it's really not by much. They're really trading blows with each other right there. But having all of this packed into such a small form factor mini PC is really awesome. And you know, if you're a regular view of the channel, you know how much I love these mini PCs, especially with this much power. The last Nook I tested, which was that Nook 11 Enthusiast, was one of the most powerful mini PCs that we've ever taken a look at here. But yeah, this thing is definitely outperforming it by quite a bit, as you saw from the benchmarks. Now I have a few more videos planned, and if there's anything else you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments below. Personally, I haven't done much research on the drivers for Linux when it comes to these new Arc GPUs, but I'd love to see what we have there, and if I'm able to get something up and running, I'd like to test Linux on this thing too. But if there's anything else you want to see, be it an operating system, more games, more benchmarks, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more about Serpent Canyon, I will leave a few links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one, and like always... Thanks for watching.